with Tesla and SpaceX, Elon Musk made electric cars and fight with space flight, ubiquitous. Now with Neuralink, he hopes he can do the same for mind-machine interfaces. What is Neuralink? Elon Musk was wants to control machines with just the power of thought to that end. In July 2019, Musk and his team revealed that they had developed ultra-fine threads that can be woven into your brain to listen in, in your neurons. The company has also built a robot that can perform the surgery under the supervision of, of a neurosurgeon. When the company was first launched in 2016, Musk said he wanted to help humans compete in a world where artificial intelligence, AI, had surpassed them. To give us more bandwidth with this new announcement, the researchers have turned their attention to helping those with brain-related disorders. How does Neuralink work? The N1 AA 4mm square chip is implanted into the skull. Attached to the chip are wires thinner than a human hair, which reach out into the brain. These threads are placed close to the important parts of the brain and are able to detect messages as they are laid between neurons, recording each impulse and stimulating their own neural link says the N1 is able to connect with 1,000 different brain cells and that the patient might has have many as 10 N1 chips implanted. The chi chips connected wirelessly to a wearable device that hooks over the user's ear must much like a hearing aid and contains a Bluetooth radio and a battery. Neuralink says that First devices will be implanted via traditional neurosurgery, but eventually the chips may be will inserted safely into the painless or small incision by a robot surgeon. What are the risks of neuralink? As explained in the Bible, Revelation 13 verses 16 to 18. Also, it causes all both small and great, both rich and poor, both free and slave, to be marked on the right hand or the forehead, so that no one can buy or sell unless he has the mark. That is the name of the beast or the number of his name. This call for wisdom. Let the one who was understand calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. And his number is 666. It means we are already controlled and we monitor they, through this microchip. They can give us signals to what they want to do and what they want us to do. So it seems far fetched. In the Bible, in Revelation 3. Verse 12, the one who conquers will make him pillar in the temple of my God. Never shall he go out of it, and I will write on him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which comes down from my God out of heaven, and my own new name, Jesus Christ. What, when you said you won't have to talk to each other anymore, we used to joke around about that. I, I've joked around about that a million times in this podcast, yeah. that one day in the future there's going to come a time where you can read each other's minds. Yeah. And well, you, you'll be able to interface with each other in some sort of a nonverbal, mm -hmm. non-physical way where you will transfer data back and forth to each other without having to actually use your mouth yeah, and make noises. Yeah, exactly. So when you... Like what happens when you when like let's say you've got some complex idea that you're trying to convey to somebody else, and how how do you do that? 
Well, your, your brain spends a lot of effort compressing a, a complex concept into words. And there's a, there's a lot of, a lot of loss, information loss that occurs when compressing a complex concept into words. And then you say those words, those words are then interpreted, then they're decompressed by the person who is listening. Um, and they, they will at best get a, a, a very incomplete understanding of what you're trying to convey. It's very difficult to convey a complex concept with precision. Um, because you've got compression, decompression. You may not even have heard all the words correctly. And so uh, communication is difficult. You know, what we have here is a failure to communicate. <laughs> cool Aunt Luke. Yes, and there's a <laughs> great movie. <laughs> yeah, great movie. And th there's an interpretation factor, too. Like you can choose to interpret certain s series of words in, in different ways, and they're dependent upon tone dependent upon yes. social cues, even facial expressions, sarcasm. There's, there's a lot of variables. Sarcasm is difficult. Yes. Yeah. And so <laughs> one, of, one of the things that I, I've said is like that there could be potentially a universal language that's created through computers that particularly young kids would pick up very quickly. Like my kids do TikTok and all this jazz, and I, I don't know what they're doing. They just know how to do yeah. it, and they know how to do it really quickly. Like they learn really quickly, and they show me how to edit things. And yeah. it's if you taught a child from first grade on how to use some new universal language, I mean, essentially like a, a Rosetta Stone and something that's done with, that interprets your thoughts, and you can convey your thoughts with no room for interpretation, mm -hmm. with clear, very clear. And the, where you know what a person's saying and you can tell them what you're saying and there's no need for noises, no need for mouth noises, no need for <laughs> yes. these sort of accepted ways that we've uh, sort of evolved to make sounds that we sure. all agree we through our cultural dictionary and right. we agree or certain. We, we could bypass all that. Yeah, you can still do it for, for fun, for sentimental reasons. Right. <laughs> like campfires. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I don't need campfires. I don't <laughs> need to roast marshmallows. It's kind of fun. Right. Um, so, yeah. Um, yeah, I think you would, in principle, you would be able to communicate uh, very quickly and with far more precision uh, ideas. Uh, and, and language would... I'm not sure what would happen to language. But you, you could probably, in a situation like this, that you would be able to just, it would be kind of like the Matrix. You, you want to speak a different language, no problem. Right. That's why it was downloaded the program. Whew. Right. So, at least for the first iterations, first few iterations, we'll just be able to use, like, I, I know that Google has uh, their, uh, some of their Pixel Buds have the ability to in interpret languages in real time. Like, sure. Yeah, you can hear it, and it'll, it'll play things back to you in whatever language you choose. So it'll be something along those lines. Yeah. For the first few iterations. Well, the first few iterations are. I mean, what I'm talking about is like in the limit over time. You know, with, with a lot of development. Um, the first few iterations, r really, in the first few versions, all we're going to be trying to do is, is solve their brain injuries. Um. So, so it's like don't 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 worry that it's not going to sneak up on you. This 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 will take a while. How many years before you don't have to talk? If the if the, if the development continues to accelerate, then maybe like five years, five to ten years. That's quick. That's really quick. That's, that's the best case scenario. No talking anymore in five years. Best case scenario. <laughs> but man, ten's, ten years more like it. After seven years of research and development, Elon Musk Neuralink got approved by the FDA for its first human clinical trial. This means the project is one step closer to achieving its ultimate goal, creating a brain-computer interface that can restore vision and cure paralysis, even help with autism. The approval was not without its controversies, though. Elon Musk and Neuralink got public backlash in 2021. Employees revealed that animal trials didn't go smoothly. In some instances, 25 out of 90 died. The wrong size chips? Was this FDA responsible for it? 
a series of animal trials prove that Neuralink is more than a sci-fi concept. And now the company is trying to achieve the same success with humans. In December 2021, Elon Musk showcased Neuralink with Saki the monkey using keyboard to ask for snacks using by his mind. The brain computer surface got Saki a couple of fresh grapes, but revealed what it can do for humans. It got public's attention. Neuralink connects your brain to an external computer via Bluetooth with a computer chip that is attached to tiny threads which are stitched into your brain. The device can read signals from coming from neurons and translate, translate them to motor control. The chip is installed on the brain with extremely precise sewing machine like robot. Procedure is done. Patients can control electronic devices, smartphones, tablets, and computer. Sounds great for people who have disabilities, affect motor. It doesn't even begin to describe planning into the future. One of those restoring vision even for individuals who never had eyesight, engineers at Neuralink suggested that vision can be restored not by connecting the brain to the eyes, but by creating the desired footage in the brain. Using a camera attached to the patient's head, Neuralink can transmit vision and stimulate the necessary neurons to create a clear image. Behind that, it can also help with neurological disorders by stimulating or modulating specific brain regions and correcting abnormal patterns. After showing promising results with animals, human clinical trials are planned in the near future as Neuralink gain got a green light from FDA. FDA was hesitant in giving Neuralink the full ball at first and asked for repeated and comprehensive testing for human clinical trials were even considered. Mass and the company have been trying to get approval since 2021. It seems the tests were sufficient enough though. If this decision was surprising for some, given nearly less than stellar reputation, the company was known for rushing experiments, resulted in more animal deaths than it was necessary. So the negative ethical the approval can be considered worrisome. In announcement in Twitter, Tweeted, Neuralink shared their excitement. Important step, though, to allow technology to help many humans in the future. Recruitment for trial has not begun, but its first trials go as planned. You can be the proud owner of a top the line brain chip computer in the coming up coming years. I know exactly what you're. I don't think you're a bad guy. You're trying to survive for you and your family and do good. Okay, but your, no, 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 my no, no, family, no, no. your family, none of us are gonna make it. There's a post-human error coming. Yeah. They've made freaking deals with interdimensional aliens. It's true. I think we may be able to implant a neural link in less than a year in a person. Okay, but it would be flush with your skull. So you basically uh, take out a chunk of skull, replace put the neural link device in there you'd insert the electrode threads very carefully into the, the brain listen man let me tell you something let me tell you something <laughs> you know I, I i'm not gonna get into it as you can see in the next video it's very mind-boggling you can see an ai chat gpt pastor evangelizing some germans in a certain city in a church Ich habe der künstlichen Intelligenz gesagt, wir sind beim Kirchentag, du bist eine Predigerin und du, das Motto ist, jetzt ist die Zeit, wie würde ein Gottesdienst ausschauen? Und dann spuckt die erstmal einen groben Rahmen aus und dann sagt man, okay, und jetzt mach doch mal diese Einleitung und dann schreibt die diese Einleitung und das geht dann immer weiter und weiter und am Ende hat man eine recht solide Predigt, würde ich sagen.
gut 98 Prozent kommen von der Maschine, ganz allgemein gesprochen. Und was wir heute sehen werden, ist der Versuch, sich als Mensch möglichst aus dem Gottesdienst herauszuhalten. Ähm, es war spannend, interessant, aber für mich war es zu monoton. Also die Avatare zu schnell gesprochen, man konnte teilweise gar nicht wirklich im Kopf mitdenken beim Gottesdienst. Es war zu wenig Persönliches einfach. Ich war positiv überrascht, wie gut es doch funktioniert hat. Aber ähm, eine Sache, die mir da natürlich definitiv gefehlt hat, das war einfach Emotionalität. Ich halte es für eine sehr gute Chance, dass man sich jetzt mit KI tatsächlich auseinandersetzt, auch im religiösen Bereich. Ich denke, dass das immer stärker integriert wird in die Gottesdienste, in den religiösen Bereich. Und von daher ist dieses, äh, dieser Versuch oder dieses Experiment, als das es angedacht ist, ähm, eine wichtige Chance, mit KI in Berührung zu kommen. Is my first messages in chat GPT. This is a draft of my chat GPT messages. As you will see in the next video, you will find the reasons why and how chat GPT will be born in the next years. I ask the AA chat GPT question. The end of humankind, he answers. The phrase, the end of humankind, typically refers to the hypothetical scenario in which the human species ceases to exist, faces extinction. While it is possible to predict the future with certainty, I can provide you with some potential scenarios that could lead to the end of humankind. Number one, global catastrophe. Natural disasters like supervolcanoes, asteroids, impacts, or massive solar flares have the potential to cause widespread destruction or disruption, potentially leading to the extinction of human species. Number two, nuclear war. A large scale conflict between nations could result in the devastation of cities, infrastructure, and ecosystems. The long-term consequences such as nuclear winter or raging active fallout could have a catastrophic impact on humanity. Pandemic A highly contagious deadly pandemic has the potential to spread rapidly across the globe, overwhelming healthcare systems and causing widespread death. While advances in medicine and healthcare have significantly mitigated the impact of infectious diseases, the emergence of new highly virulent pathogens remain a concern. Number four, one of the important ones is the climate change. The consequences of climate change, including rising sea levels, extreme weather, by events, food and water shortages, this is very important, and ecosystem collapses would lead to widespread social and economic destruction, potentially destabilizing societies and threatening a human survival. Number five, technological catastrophe. The rapid enhancement of technology brings both benefits and risks. What is the mean? If advanced technologies such as artificial intelligence or biotechnology were to fall into the wrong hands or could roughly malfunction, they could cause significant harm and potentially endanger the existence of humanity. It is important to note that while these scenarios present potential threats, humanity has proven to be resilient and adaptable throughout history. Efforts in science, technology, and 
global cooperation and crucial mitigating this risk and ensuring a sustainable future in humankind. Hope you can know what is this. Asking again question to chat the bit. The role of AI in the end. The concept of the end times is typically associated with religious factors and apocalyptic scenery. Well, the of artificial intelligence or AI such events is speculative and subject to personal interpretation. There are perspectives that people might consider. Number one is the facilitation of surveillance. This is very alarming. Some believe that AI could play a role in enabling pervasive surveillance like a 24-7 surveillance during the end times advanced AI systems could be utilized monitor and analyze vast amounts of data potentially aiding in the identification and tracking of individuals or groups number two weaponization in a doomsday scenario the pos it is possible that AI powered weapons of autonomous systems could be employed and this could be included in the AI controlled cigarette advertised to be consumed thus then small disclaimers in the end in the ingredients you are already warned that AI could be threatening if it falls in the wrong hands it may be helpful to the persons with, it, with the disabilities but in instance still could fall to major malfunctions if the AI robots will rebel against humanity Thanks for watching my upload video of all things. The Lord Jesus Christ still is above all these scenarios and pray always to Him everything. More blessings to us.